that's a lot of real estate to get your leg up and over and then that really low saddle. So pu push starting this is a nightmare. So you really want something like this. Just jump start yourself. sent me another jump starter power bank. They gave me the product to review it. They're not paying me to do it, but the whole point of this is, is that they listened. That's awesome. Uh, the last one was white and it had a really slick surface. It looked like an iPod or something. It was just really slick and white, you know, like some of the first generation ones. And there was an issue where if you didn't unplug it first and it didn't say in the instructions, it was a little bit ambiguous. But basically, they fixed those things and they sent me a new one and said, hey, check it out. And so I'm like, well, here's the rest of the story. Here's what happened. So here's an unboxing, my style. There. <laughs> Everything made it and it looks great. Uh, so these are the options to charge it with. You can see that there's a really small port for it and either one of them will fit in here where it says imp. And so you can't confuse and jump start your car with this and try to plug it with the output. It's just not going to work. There's an output of 12 volts and an output of 19 volts. So you've got all of these different plugs and they plug onto this cord. And here's one of the things I really like about this. They're all the same either way. You don't, you, I mean you can do it with your eyes closed underwater in the dark pretty much and still get it right because you can't plug it into the wrong port. This one is the low voltage close to the end. Uh, 19 volts, a little higher voltage. You got three and a half amps here and you've got 10 amps here. And then you have the USB outputs for your other electronics, uh, specifically your iPod or your older iPhone, your newer iPhone, and your Samsung or Galaxy device and pretty much everything else. Pretty sure it's micro USB type B. You've got five volts, one amp, or you got five volts, two amps. Again, the lower one is to the outside of the unit. Now what about being slippery? It's kind of rubberized, it's grippy. It stays put pretty good, that's awesome. We've got one more output to talk about. So you've got an LED display that shows how full it is. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, it's fully charged. You wanna have at least three before using this next output, and that is uh, the cable and it says cable input, it should say output. The only things that I would really recommend is more case please just to contain everything. I mean, yeah, they got everything to fit in this box, but it's a lot of unpacking to get it out. Uh, so that, the Samsung plug, and then this needs to say output instead of input. Um, they've got a one-way plug so that you don't get the polarity wrong. Try to do it backwards, it won't go in. That's awesome. Again, if you're in the dark blonde folded, you'd be great. So when you hook this up to a battery, you take the black, hook it to the negative, and then you'll see a light. A green light comes on to say that it's correct. We're going to hook it up backwards, and this scares me as much as it does you guys. You hook it up backwards, and what does it do? It barks at you, says, hey, come on. I love that. I love user-friendly stuff because that way I can feel comfortable lending it out or having my wife run it. You can hear relays clicking in here. It's nice that it has that kind of protection. They've come a long way. I'm really happy that they sent me a new one. I mean, yeah, they're not paying me anything to say anything about it, but isn't it fun when people listen to you? <laughs> so what other features does it have? It's got the car jump starter. You've got your various outputs. Um, you'd notice this button here. It's got a little flashlight or light bulb on it. Battery capacity, 15,000 milliamp hours. That's awesome. Let's try the flashlight. So the way that the flashlight goes, push it once, it's on steady. Push it a second time, you get a strobe. Push it a third time, it goes one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three short, three long. Three short is SOS or save our ship or distress call. So you can just set that out there and most everybody you know that flies aircraft or watercraft or whatever what the SOS is and you've got it on there. You could use it if you're out hiking or whatever. It's nice to have something that can do an SOS ongoing for you. It's got a long life battery and a low draw LED so I can see that being something helpful. That's cool. Useful feature. So you've got your flashlight. Everybody knows what a flashlight's for. Now what about this guy? Now if you couple the non-slip surface with that flashlight, say you've got a problem. I had a problem with my truck one time where my battery went dead. My alternator had always been fine, no big deal. And then something happened with a relay, some electronic problem, and my car basically went dead. My truck went dead on the side of the freeway. I didn't have any way, no power whatsoever. And 
I didn't have anything to really mark or indicate to the traffic oncoming in the freeway that there's something wrong. That's where this and the non-slip surface comes in handy. What am I going to do with this thing? I, I love having something like this on hand and it, it meets my needs. It's exactly what I was looking for. They asked me if they could send me this and I'm just like, heck yeah, I could totally use that. Let me show you how I'm putting this to use. Look how effective that is. I mean, I've got a lot of bright lights on. I've got the wall mount light, I've got a shop light, I've got all that shining at you, and you can still see that just fine. Uh, vehicles are going to see that farther down the highway than just a hazard light or something like that and be able to move over and give you some space. And people can do that because they have more warning. They can see it further out. Alright, so I've got this motorcycle draining on the battery for quite some time. You go to start it now and here's what you get. I'm holding the button down the whole time. It's just not going. It's just a click. <laughs> so that's all we've got. So the first thing you want to do when you're jump starting something like this is get to the battery. Motorcycles don't have a cab to lock a latch for the hood, but what they do is they'll have a means under the seat or behind the panel or something like that. It's actually a police bike and you've got locking boxes on each side. So you can just lift the two halves of the seat and then you just pull up the seat and that gives you access. So you take this, push a button on the front, make sure you've got at least three of the LEDs lit up. You open the side case like this, plug it in the only way it knows how, and then red goes to positive. Verify that look on the battery and really make sure, uh, but if you get it wrong, it's going to protect you. So I've got a green light, push the boost button, wait 30 seconds. I hear the relay, by the way, kicking on and off as it doesn't want to get too hot. This is the best way for your battery is to just give it a little bit of time. An automatic battery charger will do the same thing and basically what it's doing is making sure that you don't overheat anything with the battery or the terminals. So that's probably good enough. This hasn't been very much time. It's not going to be a long video. But now we turn this on. And there you go. Green light turns off. Go ahead and unplug it. Guess who's not walking home? <laughs> me. This actually happened to me the other day. I didn't have this yet and then they emailed me the next day about it. They're like, hey, do you want this? I'm like, heck yeah. So what happened was this had been sitting all season. It finally got warm enough to where I could run it and I had the seat heater going. I had the grip heater. I was all bundled up. I drove seven miles to the post office. I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, get to the post office, check my P.O. box, come out, go to start it, and it's dead. I mean, just so, so dead. The good thing about these bikes is they got these big fairings and the engines right here so that you've got warm air on your ankles and your feet. The wind's blocked from the side, and it's just really comfortable in cold weather to ride. And you got these boxes to haul stuff with, that's great. But if you've ever tried to push and pop start one of these, even with a hill, it is terrible. It is such a pain because when you look down at this, you're pushing the bike and you're running and you're not hitting here and you're not hitting there, but you can't, you can't take a step close and then try to get your foot in because your knee hits stuff, it's just hard to get in. And then when you go to swing your leg over, that's a lot of real estate to get your leg up and over and then that really low saddle. So pu push starting this is a nightmare. <laughs> so you really want something like this in your, in your boxes so that you've got some way to just jump start yourself. That way you don't have to be running alongside the highway. I mean, I was running on the side of the highway. There's a snowbank and there's a teeny bit of room and there's gravel. And there's traffic and cars coming this way because the way that the hill went, I had to go into traffic and it didn't work. I could never get it to pop start because this engine's a 1200cc monster that really just didn't want to have anything to do with it. Plus I'd tried so many times to start it, the battery was dead and the ignition system wasn't getting the love that it needed. Just want to say thanks to Gulu for sending this to me. Timely, they listen to me, and it's just perfect for my needs. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Hey.